Oh. There you are. Been looking for you. <laughs> Greetings, collectors, followers, and friends. Tom Hughes here, back finally with some more thoughts on painting. Uh, so, straight off the bat, um, sorry. Uh, sorry I've been gone for so long. Um, you've been very, very patient. Um, I probably get a couple of emails a week, um, or have done for the last year, asking why the video stopped um, and when I was coming back, which was uh, um, very kind of you to miss me. Um, first things first, where are we? We're in Dartmoor in Devon, um, which is, without wanting to be too cheesy, my spiritual home. Um, I spent um, uh, a week or two here every summer from about the age of two or three up until about 16. Uh, so it's, uh, it's embedded in me, it's part of me. And we're currently sitting on Hay Tour, which is one of the more dramatic tours. A tour's a big pile of rocks on top of a hill. Um, and it's slightly hazy but clear day. It's, it's wonderful. There's no one here. It's, I'm, I'm it. I can't see another person. Uh, and the National Park just stretches out for many, many, many miles in that direction. Um, yeah, it's stunning. So, um, where have I been, uh, what's been happening, and why was I gone? Um, I needed uh, a break, really, from everything that I was doing. Uh, I was very t physically and mentally tired from doing a lot of plein air trips. Um, and I'd also been doing it pretty much solidly for five years. Uh, straight. Um, it's my seventh year anniversary actually just last week from starting to paint uh, and specifically painting outside. Um, yeah I just I wasn't burnt out I was just at the end of that chapter as it was. Um, painting works in cycles a lot of the time uh, and you find yourself, well I find myself, and I've spoken to other painters about it and they have a similar thing where you come, you, you sort of abandon, you, uh, you, go, you follow a track of inquiry and then you sort of eke out every single option along that track and you feel like you get to the end of it and then you have to back up and maybe take another route for a while and then you get to a sort of a roadblock in that one and you get to another one and it, when you do enough of these you end up back where you started <clears throat> which um, initially I found to be a really demoralizing uh, feeling because you you saw in, in a way it feels like oh god I tried all these different approaches I experimented with all these different aspects of painting and I'm right back where I was but you are older and you are wiser um, far more so than it may seem or you think you are uh, and it took a while to actually realize that so yeah I'd been painting plein air a lot and I'd done hardly I'd done a bit of studio work uh, scaling up paintings to uh, in the studio to large versions because I I really, really don't like painting big outside. Um, uh, I never have. Um, I don't know if I ever will, but it just doesn't sit well with me. I like doing everything a la prima in one sitting. So I wanted to paint big and I didn't want to do it outside and I hadn't ever painted uh, landscapes big. I'd done still lifes big uh, from life in the studio with lamps and I'd done big studio interiors, as you may have seen. But I hadn't done the themes that I was painting outside on a large scale, so I hadn't done big paintings of urban areas or big paintings of coastal, excuse me, coastal scenes. And I wanted to do that really badly. I thought it was um, sort of 
an essential <clears throat> part of my practice had to be that I could paint outside and I could also come inside and scale it up. It just seemed that that's what you do and what I felt I had to do and wanted to do, really. Um, I wanted to do it. And yeah, my learning curve had started off really steep with plein air and I was learning a lot quickly. And then it started to level out about year, <clears throat> excuse me, about year three, um, sort of, yeah, by year five, I was felt like I wasn't progressing and uh, it stopped being as exciting as it was. Um, I only get really fired up when I feel like I'm doing something new and I've made a discovery. Like I've learned that about myself. A lot of my energy comes from uh, having the freedom to follow any train of thought that's currently, you know, uh, possessing me. So I stopped making the videos and I went into the studio and I primed up some big boards and I painted big paintings of London for uh, about a year, I guess, maybe. Um, I was doing a bit of plein air on and off, but I wasn't making videos, as you're well aware, if you're a subscriber. Um, and it was a good experience. I learned a lot about scaling up and um, I did some plein air the other day and I could feel that the work I'd done in the studio it was feeding back in and this is a really important thing that just because you go off and do a slightly different area of practice um, you're going to get benefits from that in another area on the circle that you may not have been able to get if you had just stayed doing that so you know it's a bit of a analogy for life really if you go away traveling to India or Australia or America for six months whatever on your own preferably by the time you get back you're still you but you're like a different wiser version of you and you approach people problems and situations in your everyday life differently and better for having been away and I think that's going to be the case of Planet. I think my work's going to be better for having given it a break and done this other thing. Um, I don't like making predictions for the future but I think I want to keep doing studio painting alongside Planet. but it's spring, the sun's out and in this country uh, you have to make hay when the sun shines because it doesn't shine very much so that's the plan I hate saying plans because <laughs> I changed my mind more than anyone I know so if this is the <laughs> if this is the only video that I make all year sorry uh, but at least you've got this one no the plan is to make to make thoughts on painting uh, a more regular thing again um, it's actually I can't tell you how nice it is to be outside and specifically here set on hay tour uh, it's just it's just magic this place it really is um, I'll give you a quick pan um, there's like you know there's wild horses and um, wild ponies all around um, all over the place there's sheep uh, running about that's the this is the rock I'm sitting on um, yeah everything's just free and wild here it's absolutely fantastic um, there's something about national parks isn't there they are so much better than um, there's just something ancient uh, there's something truly ancient about this landscape if you uh, I don't know enough of it to off the cuff uh, tell you about it but especially if you're in the States just do a little Wikipedia um, session on Dartmoor National Park and read up about the tours 
there's there's um, Neolithic stone circles all over the place up here, so people have been, you know, settled. There's 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 the evidence and the remains of the foundations of these truly ancient uh, settlements, and um, I guess at the sort of maybe like at the dawn of agriculture. Um, really, really old. Uh, really old landscape and the tours are sort of dotted around um, all over the place there uh, I don't know if you could see you probably can't on the GoPro but there's another one like up there uh, yeah they're everywhere right well oh the other thing I'm I'm constantly trying to experiment when I make these films with video production and I noticed looking back over a couple of previous episodes uh, because I haven't got one of the new GoPros with in-body image stabilization there was a lot of shakiness especially when I'm walking and talking so from now on I, I sort of that it's nice in a sort of vlogging kind of way or you know you're 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 walking with me there's a sort of engagement and excitement to that but you can't really beat a fixed camera position on a tripod. It's just, I think it's just a bit easier, a bit easier on the eyes. I was getting a bit motion sick uh, scanning through some old episodes. I also got a new uh, wind sock thing. I think they're called dead cats. Uh, I made it out of a um, one of those little uh, foam scouring brushes and a rubber band. So hopefully you haven't got loads of wind noise. Should we do some painting? So I often think in situations like this, if I'm going to fall off a cliff, I'd rather people knew how it happened. So I might as well turn the camera on. What are we gonna paint? That? Or this from down there? Um, I reckon I could make it if I jumped, just from there. No, don't be silly. People must have fallen off this, mustn't they? They must have. I refuse to believe this is weather erosion. Something makes me think that was carved out. <laughs> um, let's keep going. Had a truly epically awful night sleep last night which is fairly common for me if I'm planning a trip you can guarantee that my children delightful creatures that they are will wake up five times during the night and then I'll have to get up at five anyway so I had about four hours last night not ideal, but I have done some of my best paintings while utterly exhausted, so, yes. Right, I didn't die. Now, although the sun's out, it is still a little bit chilly, um, so I've, I've recently developed this, uh, this trick to, um, I'll just show you. Okie 
dokey. So I'm assuming at this point that that rock is still uh, classed as Haytor. I'm sure I'll find out when I get home that it isn't. It's actually a different tour, but for now it's Haytor. Yeah, that's a nice composition.
was a big bee.
There's something very satisfying about painting rock. Uh, I recently did a studio painting of some rocks uh, on the coast in Cornwall at Treyarnon Bay, I think it was. It's, it's just something about trying to make that form from light to shade really satisfying. This oh. <laughs> fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. It's funny hearing conversations carried on the wind. I noticed that a lot from plan air painting. You get these snippets. Like little glimpses into people's lives and into family dynamics, snippets of arguments, who left the jumper in the car, <laughs> where's the nearest toilet, all that sort of stuff, it can be quite funny. Trying to tell the story of a surface without overdoing it. We were wondering what the, um, the, the little pipeline was up there. Pipeline? Where's that? You can just make it up. It sort of looks like a water pipe coming down from the Oh yeah. You see where I mean? Yeah, I can see it. I've I've no idea. I wonder whether it was something to do with climbing or Oh it might have been an old handrail. Because they can't imagine why there'd be a pipeline they coming down or going up. They carve steps into the side of this one so you can walk up. So there might have originally back in the day been a, a handrail to help people get to the top. Yeah. yeah. yeah That's my time. guess. <laughs> Now, do I put people in it? I don't want to. It keeps it a bit more... Oh, I don't know. Maybe I should. I don't want to, because... It's a nice sort of thought to feel like I had it to myself which I did when I first got here, but it never lasts, does it? People always turn up. And why shouldn't they? I'm here. Enough, enough. I remember reading somewhere that if every mark you add stops improving it, then you've got to the end and you should stop. But it's so hard to know when that is. You're sort of desperate to get those last few marks that really make it and desperate not to put those last few marks in that ruin it. It's such a balancing act. Really tricky. I think that's made it a bit more 3D. There's some it's that dappling on the uh, dappling on the rock seems to 
be missing tells the story. The rocks have that sort of, they're not as smooth as I've painted them. Steady on Tom. Don't mess it up. Right, that's it. I'm gonna stop. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, so here's the close-up. I don't know how close these GoPros focus, but... You get the idea. So that's where I was, where that woman is, looking back to this.
Ouais. Ouais. Euh, oils. On a piece of wood? Uh, yeah, it's a uh, MDF. Oh, wow. Well, use of MDF. Pro uh, oil primed MDF. Never used oils. I uh, just I go to classes on a Friday. Yeah. I've gone from uh, off done watercolors for a long time. 
been on, on acrylics and gone back to watercolours. But um, I'd never used acrylics, but I quite like using them. Hey, they dry quick, don't they? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's really very grey sky. Yeah, yeah very. Is it a hobby? No, no, no it's, it's my job. Yeah. Is it? Oh, right, okay. Well, good luck with it. Oh, thanks, mate. Cheers. <laughs> the same conversation. I've had that exact conversation 30 times, 40 times, 50 times. <laughs> I paint in watercolours or acrylics. I don't paint in oils. Is it a hobby? Yesterday, someone jumped in front of the easel and said, if I stand here, will you put me in it? <laughs> Which I've also heard 30 times. But you can understand it, I guess. Oops.
tripod and thing which you've got box has got a name, hasn't it? Uh, poor shard box. Yeah. I knew that. I just it just slipped my mind from it. Uh. Clips on.
it finished? Is it finished? I don't know. I'm really gasping for a coffee. So that'll be that's good enough reason to stop. Make a hot drink. What do you think about this sort of flat sky that we've got? I, you know, in a way it's sort of lifeless, but in another way it's rather interesting, I think. I quite like it. <sighs> but we don't want we don't want an illustration, do we? This is in danger of becoming. But it's got a look. It's got to look like you put the effort in. Okay, done. So there you go. Try to make it the same size. Right, so I've painted two uh, two tours in a row, so I want to do a proper proper Dartmoor landscape. Um, and this spot, we are we're on the sort of main we're on the main road that cuts the moor in half east to west. And up there is the best pub in the world. Uh, that's the Warren House Inn, um, and I've been visiting that pub since. 1982 <laughs> and uh, yeah it's my favorite pub um, that I've ever been to in this country it's uh, I think I'm not sure if it's still the case but last time I went in, in the, the the fire uh, in there hadn't gone out for like 60 years or something even in the middle of summer that is you know it's just uh, 
on it's just always going so it's a really like if you've been on a long walk and it's been raining on the moor and you're cold and you're wet if you walk through the doors of the Warren House Inn everything is okay it's a fantastic place and the view's not bad either so we're going to paint we I am going to paint this uh, yeah it's a beautiful valley we're right in the middle of the national park now the moor um, we've got sheep uh, fir trees and some nice aerial perspective and then we've got to hit the road um, I brought everything to make coffee apart from coffee brought milk bought my stove bought a mug got everything but uh, I didn't bring the coffee so that's really annoying because I am gagging but anyway let's get on with it Get the life out of me. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> It's nice to be out here. It really is.
don't know if you can hear that cuckoo. There. I don't know if this microphone is sensitive enough, really. The microphones on the GoPros aren't actually too bad. But you have to be quite close to them, it seems, for them to pick up. Got a lot of motorbikes up here. It's like a bit of a playground if you're a bike enthusiast, I think. Just like the Brecon Beacons. People just come up here and let rip. scattering sheep as they go. This was the most unbelievably exciting place to come to as a kid. Um, and I think it had, well, I know it had a huge impact on me, a lasting impact. It went deep, all those experiences of being out here in this um, environment from such a young age and, you know, feeling warm and in my coat and safe with my parents and seeing like storm clouds approaching on the hills and going for these long walks. It was really amazing. And I'd say there's probably a good chance I wouldn't be a plan air painter had I not spent a lot of my childhood holidays here. Definitely think that's right. Had a huge impact on me. As places and things in your youth do. These uh, formative experiences shape you more than you know, I think. I'm very grateful for having, having those experiences in a place like this. There's just so much of nothing here, which is fantastic. You don't need much. I mean, you can hear the road there. We're only just, you know, the cars up there, we're only just off the road. We're not, you know, we're not deep in the moor but you can come up here and go, you know, hiking, walking and camping and you can walk just for miles and miles and miles uh, and be a hell of a long way from any road. It's one of the few places in um, England where you can properly go into the wilderness as it were now, I know if you're watching this in the States, you'll probably just spat your Twinkie out at that statement, but <laughs> we, uh, as wildernesses go, this is, this is, uh, this is ours uh, and we, um, we're fond of it. I know it's not um, Wyoming or Utah or Idaho, but uh, you can still get lost and you can still perish <laughs> and we don't have um, we may not have mountain lions and cougars or all that stuff but there is uh, the fabled beast of Bodmin uh, Bodmin Moor I think is up in Exmoor which is um, not Dartmoor it's close by though but uh Supposedly, there's some big cats that live wild 
uh, on the moor, uh, on Dartmoor and Exmoor, of sort of photos and sightings periodically appear. Um, now I, might, I could be completely wrong about this, but I think one theory is in the 70s, I think you were allowed to have like, you could have like a lynx or a jaguar or a big cat as a pet. Um, for some reason that was uh, legal. And so people did get these enormous, you know, potentially incredibly dangerous cats as pets. And then I think when the law changed, well, either some escaped and uh, found refuge and solace in the plains of Dartmoor, or um, people just drove out here <laughs> with the cat in the boot and just released it in the dead of night. Uh, which is quite an amusing thought. Not amusing if you're a sheep farmer and uh, your livelihood is getting is a, a sort of all-you-can-eat buffet for someone's pet. But, um, yeah, that sounds like a reasonably plausible theory to me. Things were different in the 70s. <laughs> Mike Tyson bought a tiger, didn't he? Some sort of albino or Siberian tiger. <laughs> Not very fair on the tiger. It's a funny thought that when you come out here and you see these animals, you see them just just walking around, eating grass, and you just think, what is going on in your head? I mean, they, I assume animals don't get bored wild animals. I know ones in captivity do and all sorts of terrible things happen as a result but I'm assuming sheep out here don't get bored. What a strange life to not have any any real worries. Um, there are predators out here. I think foxes get, I mean sheep do get you know eaten so to say that they've got a stress-free life isn't true but I think it's it's a pretty good life in general.
Yeah, it's easy to sort of. Oh, bumblebee. Ooh. Ah! Um, yeah, it's easy to uh, sort of feel quite quite envious of animals sometimes. They don't have mortgages or deadlines or any responsibilities. They're just immersed in a beautiful landscape, eating and sleeping and doing the other thing. I hope you can hear that cuckoo. It's really relaxing. They're not really nice birds, though, are they? Don't they? Don't they kick other birds out of the nest and other nests hijack? And make make other birds feed them or something. Or am I thinking of something else? I think that's cookies. This stuff is all just what is it? It's just like shrubs and bushes and stuff. to make marks. started um, bike packing uh, with a friend which for those that don't know is you get these big bags that fit into the frame of your bike and stick out the back and sit over the handlebars that basically any way where you could conceive of mounting a bag you you do and then you take your tarp or bivy bag and sleeping bag or tent or whatever and your cooking stove and your pot and some water and you load it all up on the bike and ride off it's basically camping but on a bike backpacking but on a bike did it for the first time recently uh, just to test out the gear gonna do a proper overnight soon C cannot wait and this is a really perfect environment I think for doing bike packing anything to get outside immersed in nature is good luminous green down there
Ach. I must remember to put the sheep in. Actually getting quite cold now. I've just got a t-shirt on and a coat, but it's getting pretty chilly. That was one of those places where the weather can change really quickly. All the most exciting and best places seem to have that. They're generally mountains though, aren't they? I love putting sheep in a painting. Just these, these white balls. Great. Funny animals, aren't they, sheep? They don't really seem to know what's going on. When you look at them, sort of nobody's home. signature in earlier rather than later for some reason. Oh, it's quite a simple scene really, I mean I feel like does it need something else?
funny. People often say, oh, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, people sort of say, oh, it must be so relaxing to be a painter. <laughs> and the answer to that is, no, it's not. It's very, very rarely relaxing. When you're concentrating this hard, well, I'm not concentrating super hard at the moment, but I was earlier on that first one, definitely. But, um, yeah, it's not, relaxing is not the word I would use at all. Intense, stressful, difficult, <laughs> uh, anxiety inducing, frustrating, occasionally joyous um, but yeah not re not relaxing no, I don't feel relaxed now I feel quite happy but I, I, I don't feel relaxed because I've only had four hours sleep so I feel sort of incredibly tired uh, but satisfied, which is an important feeling to, to have and to acknowledge. Satisfaction is hard to get. I keep getting, the wind makes my eyes water and then my sun cream sort of melts into the tears and then goes into my eye and it stings like hell and I've got that for the moment that's not relaxing That's better. It's it's funny how you can not not notice something until right at the end, and then it's a sort of glaring thing that you can't believe you've missed, like the tree trunks in the forest. How did I not see that? Very strange. That's better. Now the eye's gone in, drawn in. Right, that's much better. See, with a, sim with a simple painting like this, it's little things make big differences. If you haven't really got much to work with, you've got to sort of control where the eye's going with different tricks. Yeah, that's better. That's more dark, more It's funny, sometimes I'll make a couple of marks and the mark will sort of trigger a really old memory of the moor and how the moor looks and how I sort of remember the moor looking sort of the, the Dartmoor part of my brain. Uh, and then I'll think, oh yeah, that, yeah, that. I've got to have a sort of deep memory of what it sort of feels like 
just as much as how it sort of looks in terms of colours and tones. There's like a feeling uh, that's at play here as well, which is quite interesting. So there we go, um, finished, finished for the day. That was really enjoyable and uh, yeah, as I said, tiring as hell, but um, it was uh, it was really fun and not relaxing. So it's, yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, thank you for your patience. I really hope uh, you stick around and I hope I manage to keep making these because it is fun. The editing does take <laughs> ages um, and I'm going to try, like obviously the more I do it the better I get, the quicker I get, but at the same time there's other elements that I want to start bringing into episodes. Um, Practising filmmaking in general really. And uh, yeah, that's going to eat up some time. So we'll see if we can get one episode out a week. Uh, I'll try and do that for you. Right, that's about it then. Um, if you liked this video, press the like button helps me a lot uh, and obviously if you haven't already please subscribe if that red subscribe box below the video is really bugging you if you just click it it turns gray which is uh, which is great um, yeah and the other thing you can do if you want to help me is if you know anyone else that paints uh, tell them about this channel and show it to them and hopefully we can get some more uh, subscribers. Right then, time to go. Remember, life is short, so go paint. <laughs>